ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech and the best of words are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umur muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kullu bid'atin dalala and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray wa kullu dalalatin fin nar every going astray and every misguidance is in the hellfire thumma amma ba'd an anas ibn malik رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول قال الله يا ابن آدم إنك ما دعوتني ورجوتني غفرت لك على ما كان فيك ولا أبالي يا ابن آدم لو بلغت ذنوبك عنان السماء عنان السماء ثم استغفرتني غفرت لك ولا أبالي يا ابن آدم إنك لو أتيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا ثم لقيتني لا تشرك بي شيئا لأتيتك بقرابها مغفرة This hadith that we have in the sunnah of al-Tirmidhi which has been graded as hasan and acceptable The Prophet ﷺ he said that Allah blessed and exalted is he He said, O son of Adam Verily, as long as you called upon me and hoped in me, I forgave you despite whatever has occurred from you, and I do not mind. O son of Adam, were your sins to reach the clouds of the sky, then you sought forgiveness from me. I would forgive you, and I would not mind. O son of Adam, if you came to me with sins as great as the entire earth, and then you met me without associating partners with me, I would come to you with forgiveness nearly as great as that. My dear brothers in Islam, this is a great hadith, one that gives us the most hope and magnifies Allah's mercy and forgiveness and Allah's greatness and grandeur. This hadith Qudsi, which is the statement of the Prophet ﷺ where he said words that Allah spoke. He said, Ya Ibn Adam, O son of Adam, all of mankind is called by Allah to race to forgiveness and mercy because we are ones who commit error and sin. إِنَّكَ مَا دَعُوتَنِي Verily, as long as you called upon me. Dua, when we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is a display of our need for Allah, our need for His help, our need for His protection, our need for His forgiveness and for His mercy, showing that we have no power or might. When you make dua, this is the state you enter, that Allah is capable and we are incapable. When you make dua, then hope and trust that you will be responded to as it is one of the keys to the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. عن النعمان بن بشير رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الدعاء هو العبادة ثم قرأ وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم إن الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخرين and Nu'man ibn Bashir radiallahu anhu, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, dua, supplication, that you ask and beg of Allah, this is ibadah, this is worship. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the verse, meaning what Allah said, and your Lord said, call upon me, 
and I will respond to you. Verily, those who scorn my worship, they will surely enter Jahannam, the hellfire, and be humiliated. The Hadith Qudsi continued, وَرَجَوْتَنِي And you put your hope in me. Allah knows we're weak. We were created this, with, with, with this way. وَخُلْقَ الْإِنسَانَ ضَعِيفَةً Mankind was created weak, prone to sin and going to sin and error. So we need Allah to fight shaitan. So when you return to Allah and you call on Him and you beg for His forgiveness and you repent sincerely to Him, then believe without a doubt that your Lord will forgive you. Hope for His mercy. Fear His punishment. These two go hand in hand. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he stated that the heart of the individual is, the, is like a bird. The head of that bird is love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person who has no love for Allah, nor any desire for Allah to love him or be pleased with him or her. This is like having no head. Does a bird who with no head have any ability to, life, to have life, to fly, to do anything? It doesn't. So he said the heart is like a bird. Love for Allah is its head. And its two wings are hope and fear. They have to be balanced. You've seen some birds... Deformed without one wing, they don't fly. The heart, the heart of the person, the heart of that is like a bird. The love for Allah is the head. The two wings are hope and fear, and they must be balanced. And Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu radiallahu anhu ma anhu sama an Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam qabla mautihi bi thalathati ayam yaqul la yumutan ahadukum illa wa huwa yuhsin al zan billahi azza wa jal rawahu Muslim. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he said, he was heard to be saying, three days before his death, let none of you die unless he has good expectations of Allah. Expectations that although we sinned, that we turn to Allah in repentance, that Allah will forgive us and have mercy on us. So believe in Allah. Do what He commands and obligates. Stay away from the haram. Sincerely repent to Allah if you fall into sin and have good expectations of your Lord. قال الله اعلموا أن الله شديد العقاب وأن الله غفور رحيم وما على الرسول إلا البلاغ والله يعلم ما تبدون وما تكتمون الله سبحانه وتعالى said what means know that Allah he is severe in punishment those deserving of it will not be unjustly done they will be punished Allah is severe in punishment but Allah is also oft forgiving and most merciful the messenger's duty, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he did the best job of it, sacrificing his life, his wealth, his energy, everything, was to convey the message. And Allah knows all that you reveal and all that you conceal. We have in a hadith which is very eye-opening, a straightforward hadith where Abu Hurairah he narrates that the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, said, "Lo yaghnam al mu'min ma عند الله من العقوبة ما طمع في في الجنة أحد ولو يعلم الكافر." ما عند الله من الرحمة ما قنط من الجنة أحد أحد. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in this authentic hadith if the believer knew what is with Allah of punishment no one would hope for paradise. It would be a long thought that you would ever enter it. And if the disbeliever knew what Allah had of mercy, how merciful Allah subhanahu wa taala is, the Lord of the heavens and the earth then none would despair. They wouldn't even despair of being able to attain Jannah even as a disbeliever. So fear and hope should be balanced. But this doesn't mean at all times. Sometimes you have to have more fear of Allah to balance the desires and the temptations you may be called to. Sometimes when you get in the crux, you have to have more hope for Allah's mercy and fear. Uh, for Allah's mercy and forgiveness. So you don't put your state yourself in a state where you give up on Allah and you go forward thinking that Allah cannot forgive you. The Hadith Qudsi continued, غَفَرْتُ لَكَ عَلَى مَا كَانَ فِيكَ وَلَا أُبَالِي I forgave you despite whatever may have occurred from you and I did not mind. Allah does not mind to forgive. He does not mind to have uh, uh, forgiveness and mercy upon His slaves who turn to Him seeking to make up for what they did wrong. For those who supplicate to Allah and ask for forgiveness and hope in Allah, then Allah will meet you with forgiveness. قال الله قل يا قل يا عباد الذين أصرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الله says what means say O عبادي O my slaves who have transgressed against themselves by committing evil by committing sin 
Despair not of the mercy of Allah. Verily, Allah forgives all sins. Truly, He is of forgiving and most merciful. The hadith could be continued. Ya ibn Adam, law balagat dhunubuka anan al sama thumma astaghfartani ghafartu laka wa la ubali. Allah continued to say in this hadith Qudsi, O son of Adam, were your sins to reach the clouds of the sky, the clouds that are maybe visible to our eye, but we couldn't even dream of touching them with even a ladder or one of those other lifts. You would have to go into a plane and go up miles and miles before you could even pass those clouds. If your sins were to reach that high and you sought forgiveness from me, then I would forgive you and I would not mind. No matter how great the sin, no matter how many sins you have, they are not greater than Allah's mercy and forgiveness. This forgiveness means that Allah will cover your faults Remove your sins and will not punish you in the hereafter for it. Turn to Allah, race for forgiveness and His mercy, and you'll find Allah at the, at the end to meet you with His rahmah, and insha'Allah make you from the inhabitants of Jannah. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers in Islam, so if you turn to Allah sincerely seeking His forgiveness, you will find Him ready to accept your tawbah, to accept your repentance. Allah says, وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا أَوْ يَظْلِمْ نَفْسَهُ ثُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهِ يَجِدَ اللَّهَ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Allah said what means, and whoever does evil, whoever sins or wrongs himself, but afterwards sincerely turns to Allah to forgive him, seeking Allah's forgiveness, he will find Allah off forgiving and most merciful. So seek forgiveness and repent. Allah says what means, O you who believe, turn to Allah with a sincere repentance. It's not that you commit something and say, Astaghfirullah. It has nothing in you that moved, nothing in you moved, no sadness, no remorse. This is not tawbah. But turn to Allah with a sincere repentance. It may be that your Lord will remit you your sins and admit you into gardens under which rivers flow. Yani paradise. This is the reward. Even for those who sin, who turn to Allah and forgiveness. This tawbah and nasuha, the sincere repentance, it has conditions. That it must be sincere and only done for the sake of Allah. That you must feel remorse. كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الندم توبة having regret having remorse and sadness for the sin you did this is توبة in its essence because you know you wronged yourself and you know you transgressed the limits of Allah feeling remorse and wishing you never did it immediately stopping the sin if you violated someone's right يعني your sin was stealing from someone you must return that in order for your توبة to be complete resolve with the niya the intention to not perform the sin again and do it before it's too late, يعني before the sun rises in the west or before your soul, يغرغر, يعني as the hadith says, it's rattling in your throat, meaning you're at the throes of your death. The hadith Qudsi completed, Ya Ibn Adam, لو أتيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا ثم لقيتني لا تشرك بي شيئا لا أتيتك بقرابها مغفرة the hadith continued, O son of Adam, if you came to me with sins nearly as great as the earth, an earth that takes يعني, someone shooting into space to see all of what it encompasses and Allah still knows the unknown and the unseen of it. If you came to me with sins as great as the earth, then you met me without committing shirk, without associating any partners with me in worship, I would come to you with forgiveness nearly as great as it. Forgiveness comes with Tawheed, my brothers, in Islam. It comes with only worshipping Allah alone without partners. Reading the shirk of our, in our lives, shirk that may have been introduced from our cultures or from our native lands, it is not worth it because it is the Tawheed that will extinguish the sins and earn us the mercy that we need to get into Jannah. Earn us the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So yeah, when we talk about Tawheed and when we repeatedly talk about Tawheed, it is the essence because if that's not in place, then everything else you do does not matter. 
Allah said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ مَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ افْتَرَى إِثْمًا عَظِيمًا Allah says what means verily, Allah forgives not that partners would be set up with him in worship, but he forgives except that anything else to whom he pleases. And whoever sets up partners with Allah in worship, he has indeed invented a tremendous sin. With shirk, none of your sins would be forgiven. Jahannam would be your abode. But the door of tawbah, the door of repentance, is always open. And Allah's forgiveness and mercy are greater than the sins we commit. So make a sincere repentance. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Do not despair for the mercy of Allah. <clears throat> Expect good of your Lord, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have husn al of your Lord. Allah is not harmed by forgiving. So rush to Him and beg of Him. So the means are the causes for forgiveness. That you supplicate to Allah, you make dua and you have hope in it. That you ask Allah for forgiveness and you repent to Him sincerely. And that you adhere to Tawheed, the oneness of Allah with respect to His worship and His Lordship and His names and His attributes. Allahumma khfir lil muslimin wal muslimat wal mu'minin wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat innaka anta sami'un qareeb al mujib al da'wat ya muqallib al qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik ya muqallib al qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik ya muqallib al qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik subhana rabbika rabbil izzati yamma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala nabina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in